Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the Cotswold Collectibles YouTube channel. I'm Greg Brown, owner of Cotswold Collectibles. Uh, this is going to be the third installment of our G.I. Joe knockoff, um, I guess you would say identification series, etc. Education series, whatever you want to call it. Um, this time we're going to be talking about parts and some of the knockoff parts, how you can spot them, where they came from, etc., etc., etc. And I'll just let me take it away. All right, let's go back and talk about kind of what we've been saying. I'm going to repeat myself to a certain extent, but this is the stuff that ended up in everybody's toy collection. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. this, um, you know, we talk about knockoffs and knockoffs are not evil. They're, they're vintage, they're old, they're cool, but they're not G.I. Joe. And so the value of these items is, is typically drastically less than a than a vintage gi joe and they frequently very um confused because I, I can't tell you how many times someone reach out and say oh i've got a i've got a a box of gi joe stuff it's got everything vintage in there it's all original hasbro my mom bought me the best stuff and it's all there and you go and it's a bunch of knockoff stuff and i'm not mocking i'm not knocking mama because G.I. Joe stuff was expensive and, and every mom is on a budget, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you have to maximize your value. And so for mama to buy you a bag of accessories for 99 cents, as opposed to a small card with two different accessories on it, is, is, is I can understand that. Makes and sense. plus it gives you a lot of play value. I mean, there's something about some of those accessory bags that has two or three guns and two or three helmets and, and scuba stuff and flippers. And, and even though we may have a million of these things, they're still kind of neat to have. Um, anyway, so um, I really kind of want to start off by just some of the basic things that we always come across on and a few kind of weird things that we see every now and again in the knockoff. Guns. Guns are the number one thing in the knockoff world because, as we noticed in the in the knockoff cards, typically speaking, the uniforms sucked, and the uni and the guns were kind of cool, and so they had their pros and their cons to them. Um, there's a handful of guns here. Um, they're mostly M1s. They would definitely copy off the G.I. Joe model. And almost all of the guns you're going to come across, almost all of them, are either going to be M1s or carbines. Mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, number one, number one thing to look at on all of those weapons is how are they marked? Mm -hmm. And typically... If, on, on any rifle, and I'll just start with this one, if you look along the butt edge of it, it, it should be marked Hasbro. It may say Hasbro Japan. It may just say Hasbro. But either one of that, if it says, G, if it says Hasbro on it, it is definitely a G.I. Joe. If it says Hong Kong on it and nothing other than Hong Kong, eh, it is a knockoff. That's the indicator. Okay. That's the number one indicator. I mean, that's the one thing. Now, granted, look like look at this rifle versus this rifle right here. This one's got a black strap. The GI Joe one had a black strap. This one has a white what? strap. No GI Joe one had a white strap. But you know, that's and then also just the quality of the paint. I mean, we'll do a close up, and you can just see the paint markings. They just were banging these things out as quick as they can, and the paint is terrible. It's a sloppy. It's sl sloppy. That's the word, and that's a, that's a really a key word. Another thing on a lot of these M1s, as soon as I get the flamethrower caught up, and this happened in the brown ones as well as the white ones, is they have this scope on it. Yep. And you and I were talking about this in another version, another series, but the scope on it, if, if there's a scope on this rifle, it is a on an M1 or a, on a carbine. You have got yourself a knockoff. You don't even have to look for the for the marking on it. There was never one of these made. Is it a great idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great idea. That's a sniper rifle, man. That's cool. But why would it be white? We can debate that in another day. But at the same time, too, it's a great thing. Now you talk about one of the the adventure team rifles. Oh, that, wow. Um, yeah, and this is made in Hong Kong on it. And that's your basic um, adventure team rifle with a molded strap. Right. And uh, But it looks almost identical. But it says Big Mark made in Hong Kong. And it's a soft plastic. You can kind of see on that. Cheap plastic. Cheap, cheap, cheap plastic. That's why I like a lot of these carbines. If you've got a molded strap on it, too. That's a clear giveaway. You, that's like another clear giveaway. I mean, here's a... Here's a, a double knockoff. I mean, it's got the scope on it and it's got the strap on it and it's made out of soft plastic. The GI Joe versions were, were hard, hard plastic. hard plastic. And you know, talk about that. I mean, just look at this one. 
you know, you 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 pick that one up. You look at that in a box. You see a photograph of that one. You're gonna say off your head, that's a vintage GI Joe rifle. And you know, it looks like it. It's got high quality. It's got that brown color. The paint markings are pretty good, yep. and it's got that greenish khaki colored strap. But look at the other side. Hong Kong. And it also says Leslo. Really? Yeah. So I see it. Yep. You see it on there now. And I mean, that is a damn good knockoff yeah, right there. And I mean, you put that on, a, you put that guy holding that rifle that way on a, on a shelf, I would have to pick it off the shelf, look at it to determine if it was correct or not. Right? I mean, that's how, that's how you can well, tell. The, the paint's really good. It's not sloppy at all. The right. strap looks around the color. That's right. Looks really, really good. That is pretty close. And then here's another here's another one that's just made in Hong Kong, but the quality of the wood is just, the wood brown is just, it's got some flecks of something in there. and It's just not quite right. Right. Um, and then here's another one with a black strap. I don't know if that's a custom handmade strap done afterwards or if it's... Yeah, was, that might have been a mod might. custom. And then this one... This is a grease gun, which I occasionally come across, but it's pretty hard to find, and it's solid black, but it is not the G.I. Joe version because it is marked Hong Kong. Um, huh. Here's a, this, this M16 is pretty cool. It's uh, This came with the Empire Jeep. I was about to say it looked like this and, one from the Empire and, Jeep. And there's a lot of silver, this, this really kind of bright silver, um, accessory and if you come across these days those would have come with that empire jeep and that mm -hmm. little back truck that little and, sprue. but it's kind of good to throw this out there because a lot of people will have this in their collection I think it's so. now now this gun right here uh, this is a special gun okay and i, I it's special to me and i'm going to tell you straight up it's a knockoff okay i have i have a bag somewhere mm -hmm. and i didn't bring it with me but that has this rifle in it now this gun is the only, they never, G.I. Joe did not make a Tommy gun until the modern run, until the two, 99s or the 2000s, right? Right. And when I was a kid, Bert had one of these. My buddy Bert had one of these. And we always would trade this gun between each other. And this gun had the most value. So about every time I see one in a dollar box, I have to go buy it. Well, yeah, every time you come across a collection when you're back, like you almost see that. You, I, you, it's in a done. It's I, I mean, we've all come across I've it. I've come across it three or four times. That's oh, why yeah. I was asking, what is that? Yeah, what is it? And it's actually, what's kind of weird about it, it's not perfect to scale. That, that, that. That handle's kind of big. Oh, it's, it's like chunky Hall of Fame. Yeah, chunky. yeah, it is. It's almost Hall of Fame style, yeah. you know. But no, it's a, it's a. I think it's a '70s uh, accessory bag. Huh. Um, here's another knockoff thing that I think is kind of funny. It's just a, it's just a German grenade that's all soft it's plastic. Soft. Yep. Um, we're gonna, um, and then the, as far as the gun, the last thing on the guns is this is a flamethrower, and you know, there's a couple things about this. It, you can find knockoff flamethrowers that have the, the the plug off the side mm -hmm. like the vintage ones but they're mostly common like this this is a leslo version really yeah and again it's pretty cool and uh, if you look at it i mean it just like the vintage version i'm about to say it had the brass clip it the, well, it's a, it's a, it, but it's not brass it's a piece of tin or something oh, really well wow. it's silver i mean so it's less brassy than the, the other one yeah, and then, I mean, it's cool. I mean, off or sawed off, they look pretty darn close. Yeah, and again, that goes back to that Leslo stuff. You know, that this this gun and that, I mean, <laughs> they're kind of hard to tell that they're any different. I mean, especially from the three-foot mark, you know, which is a pretty good way to tell, but anyway. So they were more of a kind of a, I guess you would say, a higher caliber knockoff company. than Right, and when we were looking at some of those carded ones, I, I didn't realize this, but but some of that Action Buddy has Leslo stuff in it. So right. I'm going to assume that that was either bought by them or something along that line. These pistols over here, uh, just to talk about them, um, look at your pistols, man. I, I have seen pistols that I could have sworn were vintage pistols. And I mean, they look identical to them, but you look close and they've got a Hong Kong on them. Really? Yeah, they're on there. This is a Red Box pistol. This one says Red Box on it. And Red Box is another one like Leslo that made really high quality um, package stuff. I, I don't have anything in the package, but almost everything I've come across that's Red Box is like, ooh, hey, that's pretty nice. I've got a, sh we'll do, we talk about shovels. I'll talk about a Red Box shovel and a radio, but um, really generally pretty nice, high quality stuff. Um, you know, let's talk about this stuff. You know, we were in the packaging stuff. I was talking about this, uh, 
um, clipboard and how this one, I mean, that looks vintage, doesn't it? I mean, you look at that, it looks it looks vintage. Yeah. But you flip it over and it's made in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. And that's just your dead giveaway. There's that mask that was in those uh -huh. Mr. Action figures. And I mean, that's in every bagged accessory bag known to man. I have probably 20 of them. And a, no, dude, I bet you probably have 30 of them. <laughs> and I bet, you know, these flippers. I got hundreds of those. And if you'd almost think these are almost as common as the, the Hasbro flippers. I mean, my God, you want to talk about the most common thing. I, here's a key, kind of a weird little first aid kit. I know I showed a couple in a package there. This is their ammo box. It's a straight blow mold. Uh, doesn't even open. There are some out there that do open and they're hard plastic. They may have a sticker on them that says ammo box, mm -hmm. but um, they don't, you know, the G.I. Joe one says right in black and bold light lettering G.I. Joe. Yep. Um, and that's that's kind of interesting. Um, the uh, So let's talk about uh, the, the shovels real quick. I'll, I'll start talking about the shovels. You know, shovels, as we showed you in the packaging stuff, they're there's a whole lot of different shovels. And I mean, these are cheap, it's plastic, it's soft, you're not gonna break it. But but look at this, look at this shovel right here. Hold that shovel. Looks, it looks almost vintage, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a red box. Yep, and it's marked so. And it's marked red box. And I wanna show you just side by side. Oh wow, it's three piece too. I, I know, and, and look at that compared to the Joe one. That's a real Joe one right there. I mean, it's... And it, if it weren't marked, you wouldn't... I mean, you'd you see wouldn't some, really know. You would see some subtle differences putting them next to each other, but still the quality, and it's that harder plastic, and it's three pieces. Most of them are just like... Yeah, they're this... Like, even this one, I mean, that's top, That's total junk right there. Yeah. It's just got a little T piece and a little thing, and, mm -hmm. you know, every kid broke that one. That is crazy. Isn't but, that kind of interesting? At least they have the honesty to market as such, you know? Well, that's one thing I'm going to say about Redbox, and I'm going to say about uh, Leslo. They made high quality stuff, but at least at least they marked it. Now this doesn't ha this radio right here doesn't have a headphone on it, but look at that radio. Oh, I've come across a ton of these. This one's a little bit closer. I've seen some of them though that the yeah. the, the markings are just really wonky. But look at but look how it's marked. That red box. That's red box toys. Yeah, right it is. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting, and I think also that um, what's also interesting is instead of the piece of string, it's got a little piece of tubing. Right, a little wire. A little, it's like it's almost like a wire. I don't, I don't know where the the radio went off to, but uh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, um, canteens. Um, again, that's another thing that's really you know, canteens are confusing, but really look at the quality. And if they say Hong Kong on the inner curve, it's a knockoff. Some of the Hasbro ones will have Hong Kong on the bottom. Just say Hong Kong on the bottom. But if you do, if if you do get them, make sure you see how there's a seam here. I mean, make sure they're clean. You would you might be able to tell. I mean, that's that even that it'd be a better seam than that. And then the painting of the top, it's always really nicely painted. This one's got some slop on it. You won't find slop painting on Hasbro stuff typically. So, but how can you tell the difference? Because obviously the first the first iteration of the Hasbro, it was it was that harder plastic with the black top. But then they had the cheapy ones that came later on. Okay, all right. We'll yeah. we'll have to do a close up because the 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 unmarked canteens that are in the later adventure team are soft plastic mm -hmm. like this, yep. but the like look at the look at how look how crappily that's molded. If you look at the GI Joe one, it has got a distinct cap. It is uh -huh. just, you can just, if you, you saw- You have to know what you're looking for because I've seen so many of them in just loose parts bins that people, because they think it's knockoff. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I want to straight up say, let's talk about knockoffs. Another thing about knockoffs. I look at a knockoff as something to me that is not vintage 12 inch G.I. Joe. Now that's me. So in my opinion, that includes Captain Action, that includes Big Jim, that includes Donnie and Marie. You know, I just don't know what those parts are. Right. So I am not an expert in Big Jim parts. I can't tell you how many oh, times no. in my dollar box, oh, I was the last show, Blake came up to me and said, hey Ace, these are from Big Jim. You gonna sell me these for a buck? I'm like, yeah, they're in my dollar bin. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. And you know, and that's kind of a, you know, 
shame on me, but good for Blake for finding oh, something yeah, good big, out of that box. Big Jim and the, the, the Steve Scout I've oh, come across yeah. and stuff Steve like that. Steve Scout stuff and Buddy and Buddy Charlie. And, and, you know, that's the one thing, you know, Stony Smith, Buddy Charlie. I do want to talk about that really quickly. If you get some of this green, solid, molded stuff that's reasonably cool quality size stuff, that's all Marks, man. Mark. It's all Marks, uh, Buddy Charlie, or uh, Stony yeah. Smith, and there's boatloads of that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, just to talk about this raft right here, I mean, oh, there was another raft we saw in one of the cards, but this is, look at that, it's marked Life Raft. It does not say G.I. Joe on it, and it doesn't have, but it's the, it's the same line. Yeah, I mean, it's the quality. Yeah, quality's, yeah, quality's it's great. Yep. Just fantastic. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit, I, I'll tell you what, I'll talk briefly about just a couple other accessories. I mean, here's binoculars. Binoculars, if they say Hong Kong on them or they're cheap, thin plastic, they're knockoff. Uh, G.I. Joe's are hard, solid plastic and uh, pretty nice. This is a holster that's just obviously a piece of junk. What I find interesting is the, the, the latch for the for the top is actually the backside of a snap. They just put a snap in there. Really? Yeah, you can kind of see it if you yeah, there. Yeah. And then these almost all have a different color lanyard for yeah. the, and that's, you know, not the red. You know, here's something that you don't oh. think is, I mean, this is one of the most common G.I. Joe things, but this is a knockoff. It's actually shorter than production. And what does it say on the side there? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. But it's got the sticker on the front. I mean, it looks almost identical to yeah, it. You're talking, talking about having a bunch of these. I got oh, a bunch gosh. of those. Yeah. Well, that's one of those things that you're going to find. It's just like flippers. You're going to probably have a lot of those and a lot sucks. of flippers. And, um, okay. So I'm going to shift just really quickly and... Um, We'll go to boots and hats real quick. I know I've done a whole bunch of videos on boots, but there's one pair of boots that I talked right. about in the videos that I didn't have with me at the time. And these are the um, the world famous uh, deep free short, uh, uh, basically foreign figure boots. And I'm telling you guys, they use the GI Joe mold on this. Oh, that's the jack boots, right? There. That's the jack boots. I mean, that look at the bottom. You know, we talk about the bottom of the jack boots and how the stiff ridges are, and that feel that quality. I mean, that's a quality boot. It's probably why it gets mistaken all the time. It does, and um, but if you notice in the on the back of the boot, there's there's hole marks mm -hmm. where it was sewn to the card. And um, they were found out there, I believe, on an Action Buddy or a, or a, or a Fighting Yank card that they're, these are actually shown on a card, um, and they're they they get they're they're sewn on a card just like that. And so the only proof that we know is that they were on a, a knockoff card. So and the fact that they've got so so lines on them, you know, gives that away. I guarantee you the deep sea the deep sea. Uh, car or deep freeze, deep freeze. Uh, window card does not have these on them. I, I can tell you that for sure. But that's still that's the touching of the boots that we're going to do today. Now I want to talk really briefly about hats. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing. I mean, like sailor hats. I mean, talk about a, a gazillion of them. A ton of them. And and I get more people asking me, how do I know how to tell a sailor hat? I well, still can't. Well, you're going to learn today. <laughs> Okay, because it's confusing. It's not the easiest thing, but it can be done. Okay, I've got just a boatload of these hats. And first of all, turn them over. And if they say Hong Kong in them, they're, eh, they're gone. Eh, now they don't all say Hong Kong in them, right? Okay. They're soft. Not all vintage hats are soft. This is the hardened, this is the hardened vintage hat. Yeah, that's shrunk, right? It's shrunk. Mm -hmm. This is the first edition hat. You can occasionally, and I mean very rarely, find these soft. If you find these soft, they're good money, okay? Hard to, hard to, hard to find. They're always shrunk. If you've got a pinhead Joe, boil this in water, Soften it, Soften it up, put on your pinhead, it'll probably sit on there pretty good. Yeah, I think we've talked, I mean, it was your David, we talked about that, you know, some people just throw them away or put them in the parts bin because they think it's like Amigo or something yeah, like that because it's shrunk right. so much, yeah. Now this one, feel how it's got, there are ridges on there. 
Okay, there's ridges, on, there's indented ridges in there, mm -hmm. right? Right. Indented ridges. That is the early shrunken hard version. Okay. Wow. They okay. did something different. I don't know what, but they did something different. And these are the second issue hats that are correct and are more common than the hard ones. And do you, what do you notice differently about those? Well, this one, the stitching is indented and the stitching on this one are raised. Okay, and now look at all of these knockoff hats. What do you see? They don't have the stitching look. Some of these are just straight lines and these other ones have longer extended lines so they don't look like stitching. Yeah. Yep. So. Interesting. It's interesting. So if it's got ridges, if it's soft and has those upper ridges, you know, where the ridges are on the outs on the upper, they're not indented. They're not indented. That's, that's to me, how I identify a vintage soft hat. Okay. Now, the shrunken hats are a different ball of wax. And I'll tell you, when you hold an unshrunken vintage hat, you can tell. Okay, so so now we got we've covered the sailor hats. Uh -huh. Let's look at um, let's look at the cadet hats and then some helmets and stuff like that. Um, okay, I didn't pull out any um, say any of, of the GI Joe versions of the Air Force dress hat, but the Air Force dress hat, much like the early Marine hat, like this solid hard as a rock mm -hmm. right right again you occasionally no markings yeah very simple design. very simple design shrank up again you will find these occasionally very very soft but they will be there's i'm not talking about the soft version that says hong kong hasbro in it this is the later edition that also came with the kellogg's marine Okay. So they kind of figured it out. It was like the plastic isn't plastic working. Plastic is so, working better. And then, so like when you get to the cadets, like when you get to the Air Cadet and the Annapolis Cadet, those hats are all soft. You never find a hardened one, right? So it was like only the first year that they like had the, the... Well, I'd say the first couple years. Couple years, yeah. okay. And that goes for the dress because the dress uniform, the Air Force dress uniform, only came out, I think, in 64 and 65. You can find soft blue hats, but they're very difficult and they're frequently shrunk much like this one is. And so, again, go back, boil it up, put it on your pinhead, and you'll be a happy cat, right? So it'll work fine. Now, look at that hat. That's pretty, that looks like a pretty good Air Force dress hat now there, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, that would actually look good. Like, well, what does it say on the bottom? Made in Hong Kong. Ha -ha, Hong Kong, bad, bad. But it's the silver paint at the front. Mm -hmm. It's got a painted black brim. Yep. Whereas this one, which is a cheaper version of the same thing, doesn't have the insignia painted, still made in Hong Kong. It's still soft. It still says made in Hong Kong. And then here's a solid black version. And then here's the marine version. Soft. If it says made in Hong Kong in the middle of the hat, and I'm saying made in Hong Kong, it is a knockoff. If it says Hasbro Hong Kong, then it is a later edition. It's good Hong Kong. It's, well, yeah. And it's so funny because you would see this in a, pat, in a, in a batch, and you, if you didn't pay attention, you'd think it's them because they just blend yeah, in. They do, they blend in. Yeah. You gotta, you've got to pick it up and you've got to look at look it. Look at it. And I mean, and that goes back to even the two to this. I mean, let's look at even at the green oh fatigue gosh, hat. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, that's actually pretty high quality green fatigue hat. You, you look at that, you wouldn't know the difference, but you look at the inside, it's made in Hong Kong. I mean, mm -hmm. look at those, those My Buddy sets that we were looking at, they look identical. And I mean, that's a great thing. And, you know, I mean, even, I mean, there's the Air Basics version, which is slightly different, but there's the, you know, we've got the, the basic common, you know, helmet right there, or the fatigue hat right there. Now, these helmets right here are interesting. This is kind of the common knockoff, right? Wouldn't you call that the, that came in that adventurer bag, that Mr. Action bag. And like I said, when I was a kid, that was my helmet. I, I had never seen a hard plastic helmet, you know what I mean? Until, because I was a 70s kid, you know? And that's, that's pretty cool. Fit on the head, just like the rest of them. But look at that. That's a pretty nice helmet right there, isn't it? 
You'd, call, you'd think that's vintage, would you? It come pretty close because it has. Yeah. But it says made in uh -huh. Ohio. Uh -huh. And the clips are the same. And, and then again, here's a camo helmet. Yeah. And, and you know, the camos are a little easier to tell because, but I also can tell you that some of the camos are hard to tell because they probably use that same exact paint that they use next door, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the giveaway is the Hong Kong. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the giveaway on everything. It's like made in Hong Kong. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's much like knives. It's like the bayonets. It's like um, everything. I mean, I threw this thing in there just because I think it's a really cool accessory, but Joe never made it. They Joe never made, made that. I mean, yeah, that and I mean, radio. To, you know, you think about when I think of Vietnam, I think of a guy talking on a radio like that, mm -hmm. you know, but let's think about it too. It's Joe's based on Korea. So anyway, um, you know, we could do a whole video on bayonets and we probably will someday. <laughs> um, we could do a bayonets and rifles, but I think as an overall gist, um, I mean, again, we've kind of got the basic of it. I did want to apply through these out there too. the, um, the semaphore flags. I mean, th that's, that was in a, but just, Look how cheap just that the is. Quality. It's just quality. And I mean, even that stick is just, you know, it's, it'll snap in about three seconds. Oh, yeah. You know. and But anyway. I, wow. I, that's, it's super flimsy. Yeah. I mean, if you show it from that side, you're like, oh, okay. And then the other side, you're like, oh. Well, that's why you say nothing says quality like knockoff. Yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, but I think this gives a general idea of the accessories and the parts and the pieces that go into making knockoffs. And um, yeah, put some comments down there and let us hear some hear some things. I know a lot of people. I get in arguments, especially with my buddy Bert, about that's a knock. I say, dude, that's a knockoff. I got that in a set in 1972. Well, you probably got it in a bag in the same Christmas gift as 1972 and. He loves arguing with me. He just ripped so, open the bag. Yeah, he just ripped open the bag, and it's all about toys, so we all want to play with more toys. But um, I hope this, um, you know, I, I also say this, too. If you've got a question about a knockoff, um, feel free to send me a question. I mean, you can reach me on Vintage 3D Joes, and um, I love answering questions, so feel free to reach out. And like I said, this is it's going to be this ends a three-part series we're going to do. We, um, if we get enough interest, we'll probably continue this. Um, later on down the road. That's the great thing about this is if we get enough interest and enough comments uh, below and enough questions, we, we can we can videotape or excuse me, record another addendum to it. Um, in fact, um, I already have about five questions I need to ask Ace after this. We could probably do another video on that one. But, but this wraps up for this one. So uh, make sure that you uh, turn in next week and uh, we'll be starting our brand new series. Until then, thanks. I want to point this out too before okay. we say goodbye. This is a cool little fighter pilot helmet that's got a blue lens. Really? Yeah. And it's cheap because you can see the flag is going through. Look at that. Line going through it. Anyway, made in Hong Kong. Made in Hong Kong. Just remember that. Made in Hong Kong. Made in Hong Kong. <laughs>